Once again, good afternoon. Welcome aboard United Airlines Flight 310 on our way to Los Angeles. Please review the safety card located at your seat. Follow along as we review the safety features of this Airbus A320. Hi, I'm Myla Stewart. In this video, I really want to tell you about a summit that I attended last weekend called the WeVote Next Summit, put on by 18 by 18 um, that was trying to get young people to vote. Here are five things that I think you should know about the WeVote Next Summit. Because this is our first WeVote Next Summit. What? First of all, it was created by Yara Shahidi and co-organized with Now This and there were so many issues represented by the people who were there because everyone had a cause that personally affected them and that they dedicated a lot of their work to or multiple intersecting issues. Second of all, this event had a really incredibly beautiful opening ceremony that showed the type of spirituality that we can create and share together as a group of organizers. Tokata Iron Eyes is a teenage girl from Standing Rock who led us in a smudging ceremony from her Lakota culture in which we stood in a circle and she walked around with a piece of burning tobacco and held it in front of us all so that we could all be in its smoke and then we were given a small piece of tobacco and we took turns going into the center of the circle in order to pray on our piece of tobacco with our word of intention for the event. In that moment, we created a sacred space between everyone who was present at the summit so far, and I feel like that really carried out through the entirety of the summit. I'm proud to be indigenous in that and in this space here. Um, but unfortunately, 2017, February 22nd, the oil started to flow through the pipe. Um, and now my homeland is basically a danger zone. It's a place of emergency now because my people don't know what they're gonna do in the future and they don't know what to do now. What happens when the pipeline breaks? What happens, what do we do when it already has? That's why I need you to vote. All of you that are 18 and older, I need you to vote because I cannot. Third of all, I learned how immensely powerful young people are. At this event, there were so many incredible young people, including a lot of people my age or younger who were running for office or who held positions in government. I think it can become easy for young people to doubt the impact that we can have, but everyone at this summit proved that wrong. Next, this summit really enforced the idea for me that my liberation is caught up in the liberation of everyone else who was at the summit. There were a lot of really amazing activists who spoke at the event about lots of intersecting issues. Privilege isn't about what you've gone through, it's about what you haven't had to go through. about reframing our relationship to how we understand privilege to begin with. Because I know that black liberation is inten it's integral to the liberation for all. It's integral to trans liberation. It's integral to feminism. It's integral to making this a more religious, inclusive country. I believe it's important to name the various intersecting components of my multiple identities because I'm not just one thing and neither are you. When I, when I turned 18 years old, my mother took me and my twin brother to register to vote the day of my birthday when I turned 18. I won't tell you the year. Uh, she took me and my brother to register to vote, to vote. And earlier this year, I found out that when my mother turned 21 in 1971, her mother took her to register to vote. And I um, had the honor of doing this amazing show called Who Do You Think You Are, uh, which is this ancestry show earlier this year. And I found out that my three times great grandfather, Bolin Bates, in 1867, registered to vote in Dallas County two years after emancipation. I grew up um, in the Lower East Side. I was living in an abandoned building for most of my life. We first moved in, there was no water, heat, or electricity. I knew what housing issues were, I knew what poverty was, I knew what intersectionality was before it was coined. And it was, I was just always so grateful because I grew up around organizers and I grew up around activists and advocates 
and it was really powerful how they continued to make sure I got an education that maybe wasn't necessarily being given to me in my public school. Lastly, I believe that healing is especially allowed to happen when a group of people who are most affected by an issue are all together in one space. And that's really what this past weekend felt like. To me, that healing felt like when I met Laverne Cox. After she spoke, I got to ask her a question. Being here, um, I was the first advocates person in my high school in Texas. And we were just like... inspiration for my, like, starting an activism. So we talked about passports. And I was in student government, um, and during the 2016 election, we ran, like, uh, like, um, that we like helped, uh, we went, we asked for it, we to the polls um, for people who like either don't know their ideas of uh, updating with their gender or their name um, because even showing up at the polls is like such a danger to trans people who can have to, like face violence from their name or their gender or not matching up. Um, um, so I'm just like wondering how can we organize to help trans people with say we're voting or to get involved when so many people just judge that that's not a risk that they can take for their own personal safety or they don't have the resources to get ideas that would make them this is why all these um, issues are intersectional, right? So all of the voter ID laws that um, Republican administrations have been attempting to pass all over the country to basically limit the rights of folks to vote obviously affects trans people as well. Many of us do not, it's, it costs money to get a passport, it costs money to get a state ID. If you, um, you know, if you're unemployed, I think you know, the majority of trans people make less than $10,000 a year, that's another statistic. Um, we have to make, um, Again, we have to vote people into office who are not going to uphold in, in, in these kinds of policies. And voting during midterms is even more important than voting during presidential elections because the extent to which we're gerrymandered, the extent to which folks are trying to limit our rights to vote, is really what happens in state legislatures and, and um, governors' um, governorships. So I think it's really about. I, I'm so lucky that I. Um, transitioned in New York City with all these resources around being able to change my name legally. We have, um, um, the, um, gosh, uh, Till Death, we have um, Council Community Health Center, the LGBT Center, there's places where trans folks can go to change their names legally and at a very low cost. So part of what can have, begin to happen in localities all over the country is we can begin to set up those kind, these kinds of types of name change clinics where we have attorneys who maybe do pro bono work and um, let trans folks know that they can come there and get their identity documents changed legally with an attorney. So those are the things that we can begin to do in our communities to make sure that trans folks have the correct um, identity documents. It becomes really difficult if you have an administration that doesn't allow trans folks to, there have been judges who've tried, you know, wanted to not allow trans folks to change their um, their information, but that becomes a really crucial part. And then getting making folks understand that all of these is, you know, issues intersect, right? That if you are black and trans and poor or working class, then that makes it way more difficult for you to access the documentation that you need to vote. So I hope that's helpful. Um, and can I give you a hug real quick? Can I come back and give you a hug? And after that, a lot of people told me how much it meant for them to see the moment that I had with Laverne, including a couple other non-binary people who were at the event and a lot of people who dressed in a gender non-conforming way. Those are the things that I took away from the summit and things that I also hope that you feel when you're watching this video. I want to urge everyone in my audience who is able to vote in the US to please vote on November 6th. There will be information in the description where you can check to make sure you are registered and find out information about your polling place. Tuesday, October 9th is the deadline to register to vote in Illinois and in many states across the US. So if you are not registered to vote or you need to update your name or your address, you need to get on that now.